Welcome everybody, Bronson with the Epoxy Resin Store. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a custom conference table. All right, so starting out, I took this design over to my buddy and he's working on a CNC machine. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a template to cut it out. Um, this is a 10 foot long conference table, three foot at the ends, four foot in the center. So we want it to be evenly tapered across that six foot fall. So we're gonna have a computer assist us in that. And we're designing this out right now. He's gonna make like a puzzle piece that we're gonna put together and then create our table. All right, so what I did is I got two uh, four by eight sheets of quarter inch MDF. We brought it over to so be two separate pieces that we cut out into a puzzle piece that we'll use to make our conference table. All right, now we got the first piece cut out. We're gonna clean that off, pull that off, and get our second piece put together. All right, now we've got our second sheet all set up and the CNC's cutting out our second piece here. Ignore that little epoxy spill on there. We don't worry about that. All right, there you go. We've got our two pieces fit nice and tight together and that will become our template for creating our conference table. All right, measure this out. It's exactly 10 feet on the dot. That's what we're looking for. Four feet across the center and three feet on the ends. So the perfect taper that comes there. Could have done this by hand, but uh, this is the easiest way. All right, now that we're back to the shop, I got two four by 10 sheets of uh, MDF that I screwed and glued together. And now I've got the template screwed to it. And now I'm gonna take my jigsaw and I'm not cutting it out exactly. I'm gonna cut as close as I can uh, so that my flush trim bit can come in next and get a perfectly flush edge with that. All right, now that I've got it close, I've got my flush trim bit here, and I'm just gonna trim that out nice and close, just like you're seeing here. So it's just flush with that template we built. We'll have a beautiful finish edge to work with. Makes life uh, easy with a little preparation, a little planning. All right, so now that we've got the top portion cut out with the flush trim bit, it's an inch and a half, which was a little longer than my um, router bit was. So I switched to a pattern bit, flipped it over, and I'm cleaning it up so we're flush and clean all the way around. All right, now that I've got it all flushed out, I've taken my sander with some 220 grit, a couple spots where I've messed up there. I'm just gonna smooth this out. Not worried about it too much. We're gonna put a face plate on here and that'll clean up any of that stuff and then we'll go from there. All right, now that we got the piece all cut out, we're gonna remove our template and we'll be working on the actual table now. All right, now what I'm doing, I'm laying out my uh, facing strips that I'm gonna use to go around this table. I've got some tight bond wand here. I'm just gonna give it a nice uh, glue up and then we'll, I like to spread that glue out evenly. The strength comes from the glue, not the nails we're gonna put in it. So I want a nice grip all the way around. I'm just using my gloved hand to do that. And we're gonna line it up here. I'm gonna take my brad nail gun and we're gonna set those in place and we'll be good to go.
All right, now that I got all my pieces on, I've got my uh, trusty orbital sander out again, and I'm going to just sand this so everything's flush prior to putting on my Bondo to hide the seam. So I want that to be really, really flush, so I'm gonna take this, I've got a 220 grit, and I'm just gonna sand this all the way around the edges. Here we are, I'm gonna mix up some body filler now. Add my hardener, we're just gonna go all the way around the edges and we're gonna make sure that this is a completely seamless uh, top when you were to look at it once it's covered. So we're gonna mix up this Bondo and then fill in all the gaps. All right, when I'm spreading out my body filler, I like to really um, do my best just to fill the, the gap and not leave a ton of filler on there so that we're having to do a ton of work and sanding afterwards. All right, now that I've uh, got the Bondo dried, we're gonna come through here and we're just gonna go over our edges. Uh, I'm just using 220, you can see I'm rolling my wrists up and down, back and forth, really making sure that we don't have any one spot. I want those edges to be nice and rounded. So when we pour the epoxy, it flows right over the edge and we get a nice even coating. Now that we've got our table completely set, we're gonna add a bonding primer to this so we have a nice, east, even surface. And I selected a light color for our bonding primer because this is going to be a white marble top. And so we wanna have a light substrate underneath so that we don't have any dark colors showing through. Had we wanted a darker color, we would have went with a, we would have done a bonding primer and then a dark paint over the top of it, um, just as a little aside. All right, so we're mixing this up now. This is a 10 foot table by four feet wide. So we're gonna, under our math, that's 40 square feet three ounces per gallon, it's gonna give us 128, or 120 ounces or 128 for the gallon, so we're just gonna go for a little extra. We're gonna mix up our favorite super gloss tinted white, and we're gonna pour all over this. I've got my trusty trowel out now, I've mixed it all up. I've poured my channel down the center, and I love this trowel. If you haven't gotten one of these, you need to. It's made of a material that the epoxy will not stick to, and it leaves just the perfect amount of epoxy left behind as you drag it to cover your piece. So check this out. What I like to do is take my mask with it. And I just go up and down. Right now I'm just trying to get all of my epoxy spread out onto my surface, but not over the edge. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna go right over the edge with it and wipe my, uh, my edges as well. So we have a nice, smooth, evenly applied surface. All right, now that I've got all the white spread out, I'm tapping this out with my glove here. The reason I do that is I want to eliminate all surface tension prior to putting in the color effect, and I want to be able to have as much of it uh, coated with epoxy evenly, so when I go to torch it, I don't have any fish eyes or anything. As you can see, I'm showing off my favorite color, smoke gray, and here we go, putting in the effects. All right, with this, uh, we're doing the marble gray, as you see, I'm just using a chip brush. I'm gonna roll my wrist as I put it into the epoxy. Um, the key here is not to jump across it like uh, bunny tracks on it. I'm actually kind of keeping contact with the epoxy as I go, and I'm rolling uh, my wrist to get that nice marble work.
All right, I didn't have any issues on this one, but if you had like a little blemish or something that you want to cover it up, a really good tip is to go ahead and take some paint and just go over the top of your blemish. It'll hide it and you'll be able to proceed with your project. That's a bro tip from your bro, Bronson. All right, this is the attorney that we're making this for. He has blue in his logo. So we're embellishing these marble lines with a little bit of blue so that it will match his logo. All right, now my favorite color to embellish with is a gold. So I'll put a little on the stick here and we're gonna drag it gently across the uh, marble portion. Now we're using these metallics, these golds, they will float on top of your epoxy, so make sure you're putting on very last. Um, they, won't, they won't tap in like the spray paints do. So if you were to put that on and then bang it with your uh, paintbrush, it'll break up in a little clumps and doesn't look good. So we do the, the metallics very, very last, and then we just put them in with a stick. They will flow a little bit and get a little bit of movement in it, so it really adds a nice effect as the light hits it. You get a little glint here and there. Clients love it. All right, now that we got our effect in, I'm gonna to torch this out. The most satisfying, one of my favorite things about super gloss is one pass for glass. So I'm just slowly and methodically covering every inch of this. As I go over it, there's a couple things I'm looking for. I am looking to make sure I didn't have any hairs fall out of my head and end up in the surface to be found later. Hate it when that happens. Secondly, I'm making sure that there's no fish eyes. If there is, I'm gonna tap it with my glove. And thirdly, I'm looking at the general over, overall design. If I see anything odd or I don't like it, if there's like a circle or whatever, I'll tap it out or I'll add in a little as I go. Uh, it's kind of my last look. With any bit of luck, I'm not gonna have to add anything here um, as I do that. So we're, we're gonna torch this out. And look at that beautiful white. I love pre-tinted epoxy. If you're not buying that, you're missing out. Thank you for watching this video on how to make a custom conference table. Remember, we don't ask for any money from you, but we do ask for three things from you. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you're the first to hear about when we've got new stuff out just for you.